Laser sights can deter threats and aid in quick target identification, enhancing your ability to protect your family, home, and country. Crimson Trace, making laser sights standard equipment. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. Today on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, taking on inaccurate and biased media, a 14-inch pump action, your range reports, and much more. Call in now. One, Tom Talk Gun. Now, here's Tom. All righty, let's talk about guns. Tom Gresham here. It's called Gun Talk because that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to talk about well, my guns and your guns and everybody else's guns and the things that go with guns and ammo, magazines, holsters, scopes, accessories. And, of course, we'll talk about politics because you can't really talk about guns without talking about politics. Pretty simple. If you'd like to be part of the conversation, the number here is 866-TALK-GUN or just dial Tom Talk Gun. That'll get you in. Looking for range reports. Also, of course, hunting seasons are open pretty much all over the country. I'll be talking about that because I am still currently in Idaho. You know I was going going on this uh, deer hunt. Made my deer hunt, and I have some news about that and some thoughts and some observations uh, and some surprises, frankly, that came out of the hunt. And there are just so many stories going on right now. It is um, kind of weird as I think about it. The gun ban groups, the individuals, the politicians, the groups, the gun ban industry, sometimes they go into hiding. And then sometimes they feel like it's safe to come out of their little rat holes. And right now they must feel that it's safe because they see that Trump is under attack and the coup is underway with investigations and supposedly indictments coming down tomorrow. And the media, of course, running 93 to 96 percent against Trump. We'll have some news about that. An observation from a... um, super liberal leftist media guy who took a year off to go see what flyover country is like. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, he went to, he went to NASCAR. He went shooting. He, he talked to people. He went to church with people. He was surprised at what he found. The results are interesting, and at the same time, I found them somewhat depressing and sad. But I'll tell you a little bit about that as we go along. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. Uh, by the way, we are giving away stuff. Let's just go ahead and get this uh, done because this is cool stuff. Uh, doing a, a Nazar giveaway. This is the last week to enter. Go to guntalk.com slash win. Giving away a uh, CMMG Mark IV V2 Rifle in 22 nozzle retails about 1500 bucks. Uh, ammo can with uh, 300 rounds of 22 nozzle match grade ammo. Uh, just all sorts of stuff. Uh, uh, ammunition, rifles, uppers. Again, go to guntalk.com slash win, and you can do that until or through November the 3rd. That would be the last day to do that. By the way, if you have Gundelio on your phone, be sure to update that to the latest version so that it works for you. That's how you save tons of money. If you don't have it, shame on you. Gundelio is uh, available free. Well, Google Apps, let's see, the App Store and was it Google Play. There you go. Uh, all of that. Oh, yeah. By the way, welcome. We have new stations. Uh, WLFI, 1070 AM in Chattanooga, Tennessee. W- KWN. FM in Trenton, Georgia, WKWN 97.7 FM in Lookout Mountain, Tennessee, WKWN uh, 1420 AM in Trenton, Georgia. Lots of things going on. Uh, Let's see. Also, KTFS 105.5 FM in Texarkana, Arkansas, and WNTW 820 AM in Richmond, Virginia. If your local station doesn't have gun talk, shame on them. You should uh, call them. Say, hey. Why don't you guys put on gun talk? We'll make it happen for them. We can make that happen. All right, looking for your range reports, your hunting reports. Have you been out hunting? And also, is this a um, good time or bad time, in your view, to buy a gun? New guns, used guns, given the prices, given the political environment, is this a good time to buy a gun? 866-TALK-GUN.
hardcore tactical professionals who put their lives on the line every day depend on Surefire. For decades, Surefire has built the first and finest professional grade flashlights, weapon mounted lights, hearing protection, and suppressors. We build the best because lives depend on it, and we know failure is not an option. We design, engineer, and manufacture Surefire products right here in the U.S. For you, for your loved ones, Surefire. American built, American strong. Surefire.com. Every crossbreed holster is handmade based on the design invented by our founder. A Kydex pocket molded around your gun for perfect retention. Leather backing for comfort. Specially designed clips allow you to tuck in your shirt for complete concealment. The highest quality mag carriers and built sturdy enough to hold any gun. Our holsters come with a lifetime warranty and two week buy it free guarantee. Crossbreed. Conceal and carry the cross. Crossbreedholsters.com. Face it, sometimes more is better. That's the idea behind the double stack full capacity pistols from Springfield Armory. From the groundbreaking XD to the ergonomic XDM to the latest refinements in the XD Mod 2 series, you can get subcompact, midsize, and full size pistols in 9, 40, and 45. Carry, target, or tactical models. Fast, accurate, dependable. Don't come up short when it matters. Go full cap. Go Springfield Armory. Springfield-Armory.com You got your carry permit, and that's good. But do you know you could use more training? Get the DVDs, which have what you need. Springfield Armory presents Concealed Carry 1 and Concealed Carry 2 with Bata Group. Learn specific concealed carry skills from Top Gun fighting trainers. Get trained. Be prepared. This really is life and death. ShopgunTalk.com That's ShopgunTalk.com Hi, this is Tom Gresham from Gun Talk. America is losing critical wildlife habitat at a rate of one football field every hour. It's happening on the Louisiana coast, but it's critical to all sportsmen and conservationists. These precious wetlands provide winter habitat for more than 10 million ducks and geese annually, waterfowl that migrate north through dozens of states. Don't shrug it off. Get involved. You can help. Visit vanishingparadise.org. For legendary Mossberg reliability in a compact package without the requirement of NFA paperwork, look for the Mossberg 590 Shockwave. Now available in both 12 and 20 gauge. These pump action firearms feature a 14 inch barrel, a bird's head pistol grip, and a length just over 26 inches. Check out the Shockwaves at Mossberg.com. Mossberg, American built, American strong. Arm yourself with Mossberg. one you don't see every day in Jonesboro, Arkansas, just one after just one day on the run, uh, a wanted fugitive is back in police custody, thanks in part to an armed homeowner. <laughs> Jonathan Ware, 31, was found hiding in the homeowner's trash can early Wednesday morning. <laughs> uh, this guy was walking his wife out to her car first thing in the morning and saw his trash can move. And this guy was hiding in this big garbage can out there. Guy who lifts the, lifts the lid up to see you know, what's in the trash can, and there's this guy in there. I guess he still got his handcuffs on. He was able to, he was handcuffed behind his back and then able to get him in front of him, probably did the old put the legs through the arm deal, broke out of a police cruiser, got out. Police were looking for him all over. But because this guy was armed, and they, yeah, you will make note he had his gun as he's going out to the car in the morning. Always carry. Simple as that. Let's go to line one. Uh, Tom's with us out of Hemp Hill, Texas, with a range report for us. Hey, Tom, where'd you go? Oh, well, Tom, we went to uh, CSTAT. That's uh, Combat Shooting and Tastics in, uh, in Nacogdoches. And mm-hmm. uh, the guy that runs this thing, his name is Paul Howe. Sure. And he was recommended by the guys at Gunsight in Arizona when we went there in May. And uh, this guy's got a real nice setup. I mean, different uh, 
different ranges for different uh, types of uh, tactics. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was 20 people there for the uh, pistol shoot, and I think probably at least 15 of them were uh, law enforcement. There was there was uh, highway patrol cars there. There was uh, game warden cars there, sheriff's cars there. Uh, <laughs> had uh, well, black car, black cars with the uh, with the law enforcement hubcaps on them. You know, yeah, but with, were, with, with no ID on them, right? No ID. <laughs> well, you you know what's going. Let me just explain to people what's going on there. Uh, this is really is an incredible school. It's called uh, Combat Shooting and Tactics, and that's the website combatshootingandtactics.com. dot com. C S A T. Uh, the, the leader is the, the owner is Paul Howe. Uh, if you remember the movie Black Hawk, Black Hawk Down and all that was going on there, Paul Howe was really there. He was in the middle of that thing. He says the only thing that they got wrong was that it was much more intense and they were getting taking much more incoming fire than even the movie portrayed. This is why law enforcement and military come to Paul Howe and his team. If you look at on the website, that list of instructors they have there is pretty impressive. Tom, uh, how, how long was the course? How many days? Well, it was a two-day course for us. It was kind of the beginner's course, but there mm -hmm. was mostly law enforcement. And my son uh, wanted the pistol course. He wasn't too interested in the rifle. Mm -hmm. So we just went, went the one day, but it was extensive. And what impressed me, Tom, was that each individual had a, a an instructor sitting right next to them oh. that was qualified. And then... Then uh, Mr. Howe would circulate between each uh, each uh, shooter, mm -hmm. and it was it was well done, and uh, the information was was first class. Well, you know, here's what I find interesting. Also, Tom, you said that the folks at Gunsight suggested you go there. Now, Gunsight obviously is a you could say was a competitor, but at the same time, they want you to have good training. And they said, look, if you're in Texas, here's a place you ought to go. Is that kind of how it went? Yeah, they they uh, when when I asked them where there, where a place was that we could go to, and they they one of them said uh, go to uh, Seastat, and the rest of them agreed, mm -hmm. and they all seemed to uh, know the uh, Paul Howe, oh, yeah. and uh, was very complimentary towards it. Excellent. Well, look, I appreciate it. That's a great range report. Uh, I hear nothing but great things about it. It's on my bucket list of things to do. And thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. I'm thinking I've got a few bucket list things I want to do in 2018. I think I may add this to it. It's not that far. Nacogdoches, Texas, uh, East Texas, not that far from me. And I would like to go over and take a couple of days. Y y you know what? Here's what I do. I keep taking basic pistol over and over again. Yes, I'm a slow learner. I get it. But... Uh, <laughs> But I also find that it's very worthwhile. Oh, but by the way, uh, in just a few minutes here, we're going to have uh, a guy. He made the rifle that just set the world record for long range. We're talking 5,000-yard hit. Uh, we're talking about some super accuracy stuff. We'll be talking about that as well. Let's see. Uh, let's go to line three. Mark is with us. I believe that is uh, in Tinley Park, Illinois. Hey, Mark. Hi. Uh, Tom, you, you may be aware that all over the Internet, there is talk about that on November 4th, Antifa and refuse fascism and these other nitwits that are associated with those groups um, mm -hmm. are calling for mass-scale riots or protests, and this is supposed to be it begins that day and be open-ended until they drive Trump, Trump, Pence out of office. Um, I don't know. Ex nobody seems to know exactly what they might be planning. There's talk that they may be planning some kind of a tax. Nobody knows for sure. Mm -hmm. And then you may be – my first advice would be for everybody to just stay home and not, you know, stay away from it because it would start that kind of stuff in the downtown areas. Mm -hmm. But – um, a YouTube channel called Never Enough Ammo, and I believe he's out of Texas somewhere. Uh -huh. um, it's been all over YouTube, and I believe he's on Facebook trying to organize a bunch of capital, uh, state capital, pro Second Amendment rallies on November the fifth. Now, a lot well, of let, people, me, let me ask you: Do you think that's productive? I. I 
I don't know if that's a good idea to be doing it right when Antifa might be pulling this nonsense, because if Antifa decides to attack the pro-Second Amendment rallies and we engage in pro-Second Amendment-based self-defense, the media is not going to re- report that Antifa attacked the, the Second Amendment people. They're well, going to report you, that it... Well, Mark, you know what I always say is that if you're invited to a gunfight, d- decline the invitation. Yeah, that's you know, I mean, just don't be there. It's, it's it's a real simple rule. If there's going to be problems, don't be there. And for God's sakes, don't go there, figuring that I'm going to cause a problem. And that's all you would be doing. That's the only thing you'd be doing was saying, Antifa shows up. They say we want the controversy, we want the conflict, uh, we want the violence. That's why they're there. That's the opposite of what we do. We're the good guys and gals. We don't want all of that. Let them go there. Let them look like idiots. Let them look like, uh, vi- you know, they're a form of vigilante. Let them look like the anarchists that they are. Stay the heck away from there. Take your family on a picnic out in the countryside. But what in the world would somebody be thinking to go to the middle of that and, what, stage a counter-protest as though that's necessary? Uh, not necessary. Let them, you know what, the, you know what the counter-protest of these guys is? It's the police when they arrest them and put them in the paddy wagons and cart them off because they are violent. And more and more, the police are going to be saying, nope, at the first brick, we're throwing you guys, you know, in the wagon. We're putting you in handcuffs. We're not going to let you set fire to buildings. We're not going to let you set fire to cars. We're not going to let you throw bricks and harm people. And we're certainly not going to let you show up in masks with sticks and weapons. So I'm with you, Mark. Uh... (laughs) I'm staying away, man. I appreciate that. That's a, oh, Lord. Yeah, they're going to announce all this. It's a Y2K thing or something. I don't know. It's just like like that. I think it will probably amount to little or nothing, but there's certainly nothing there for us to participate in. There's no reason for us to go down there. Is there? Can you think of a reason we should be there? What what will we do there? Hold up signs that say we're right, and they're going to hold up signs that say they're right? And in the meantime, what, it makes you feel good that you showed up? Here's, I'm going to suggest this. If that makes you feel good, then you really don't understand the game. You're the guy who showed up for a baseball game wearing a football helmet. You don't understand the game that's being played. This is a battle for public opinion. Let me repeat that. This battle is about moving public opinion because the public votes. The public makes a decision. The public decides who's the crazy people. And frankly, anybody who's there when this is going on is going to be labeled a crazy person or a crazy group. So don't be there. Let them, the violent left, be labeled for what they are, which is a little bit nutso. Uh, yeah, you, you know, you could. Jim says, "Hey, you could have the rallies a week later. You could certainly you could. It won't get covered, and the reason it won't get covered is because the media, generally speaking, is super left. Uh, the former head, the former CEO of the National Public Radio, has a book coming out in a couple of days. He retired, and then he took a year to go visit America." I know it sounds weird. He went out to go find out what these people were like, the people on the right. He's written about it, and it is fascinating and depressing at the same time, because he said, hey, I went out there, and I found out that these people go to church, and they are diverse, and when they get together, they don't plot the overthrow of anything. They say, how can we make things better? You know, let's come up with real solutions. Let's uh, come up with how do we work with other groups. Uh, He went to NASCAR events. He went to church. He went shooting. He said, you know what? One of the problems is that uh, this group knows about defensive gun shootings, and the left poo-poos that and treats it as a myth. Turns out that we were wrong. It goes on and on, and, and in a weird way, I'm flashing back to thinking, it's like somebody in the 50s saying, hey, we went out and, and we hung out with with black people, and we found out they're not bad. Really? No kidding. You came out and hung out with 
conservatives and people who live in rural areas and not in New York or Washington, D.C., and you found out, hey, they're really just people like us. They have the same concerns, but they have some serious issues, and we have been ignoring them, and we have been wrong. And yet the depressing part of this is that what he discovered will fall on deaf ears in the media. They will continue to be uber left. I mean, we're talking 90 to 95 percent of the general national media votes Democratic. Uh, They won't cover things fairly. It's, It's basically what can we lead with today that bashes Trump? What's the Trump bashing thing for today? And when it comes to guns, Lord knows we have followed this for years and years of how they cover or don't cover, if you prefer. Uh, how do we put this? They lie. <laughs> it's really simple. Even when we tell them and point out that they are factually incorrect. When I caught CNN making up quotes, quoting somebody with the FBI saying assault weapons are you know, a big thing. They really make up a lot of crime. And I, went I found the person at the, at the FBI that they supposedly quoted. I called him and talked to him. He said, nobody from CNN's ever talked to me. He said, and further, if they had, I would have told them the exact opposite, that these semi-automatic firearms are really not an issue in crime at all. They made it all up. They fake their video footage. John Zarella, CNN, faking footage out there, got caught at it. Wayne LaPierre said he ought to get fired. CNN had a hissy fit over that. I don't know. Uh, it's not getting any better. In fact, it may even be getting worse. There's blood in the water, and the coup is underway, and the media is leading the effort at the coup. Hey, you know what? Don't go anywhere. We're going to be talking about something a lot more fun. Long-range shooting, which is really just super, super accurate shooting, making it harder and harder. The guy who designed and built the rifle that just set, well, a little bit late, earlier, set an incredible record, 5,000 yards. Yeah, you don't want to miss this one. Up for our Gun Talk newsletter and join the Truth Squad at www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk with Washington Times opinion page regular contributor Tom Gresham. All right, welcome back to Gun Talk. We talk about guns and shooting. And, you know, one of the things that has always been true, and I, you go back hundreds of years, we've always tried to be more accurate with our firearms. I don't care if you're throwing rocks or arrows or shooting bullets. We always try to be more accurate. Uh, accurate guns, accurate ammo, better scopes. And what we were doing 40, 50 years ago, those guns couldn't hold a candle to what we do now. And, of course, then we had bench rest shooting, and it got better and better. And now we, we try to make it harder because you have to keep testing everything. And one of the ways we make it harder is we shoot farther. Well, some guys, uh, some Americans just made a shot, reported at 5,000 Yards, 2.84 miles. And there's been a lot of talk about that. But one of the things that has not been talked about is the rifle and the ammo and the cartridge. And the guy who created those, Brad Stair, joins us right now. Hey, Brad. How you doing? I am good. Now, you're out there in Utah where uh, it's one of those deals that you don't have to advertise because the guys who know about you know about you. And you could about, you're making about all you can make right now, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm actually moving to a bigger shop, so I can I can add on to that. It can help you know, out. when you and I talked earlier, I mentioned that uh, this is really when we are talking about this long range shooting. It's really just a uh, a continuation of what we were doing 30, 40 years ago with bench rest shooting, isn't it? Yes, sir. It is. It is. It's just fun to shoot way out there. Uh, in my twenties, I I'd hit uh, a hog over a mile, and I was just hooked, and I just never mm-hmm. looked back. <laughs> but the only way you can measure it was with your odometer. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have range finder. You had to drive it. <laughs> right. That's funny. All right, tell me about this rifle that these guys used. Okay, it's um, I had run into John Taylor that invented the Shytac, and, and I looked at that thing, and 
immediately just turned it into one of my Tejas rounds, which is what I actually did. I just didn't want to copy him, so I do a more aggressive shoulder, steeper angles on the case itself. And I turned, there wasn't really any actions that I could use besides 50, so I just turned my Armalite 338 Lapua, turned it into the 408 Tejas. So I just rebarreled it, opened the bolt face, and we were done. So what is a 408 Tejas? So what, what bullet, well, what, do you, yeah. what cartridge, what is yeah. this? It's made on the 408 Shytac, and then I improved it to give it an extra 12, 14% of uh, capability in powder. Mm-hmm. And the bullet is where we kind of been playing with that for about six years and concentrated more on the subsonic flight because the original Shytac, I mean, it's supposed to get to 2,500, which it does. We run it out to about 4,000, and it starts to turn into a helicopter, and it's just part of the bullet design. Uh, sure. So I took the weight, moved it forward, and more like an airplane wing, and they're, they're just flying perfect. He actually shot what we cared about more was the group, uh-huh. um, and we didn't know there's rules, but we had a 10-shot a group inside 40 inches right next to the target. Once we already had two there, two of them were four inches apart. Jeez. Okay? So it's just we just stayed there. You know, mm-hmm. and, and yeah, we hit the edge of the plate, but still, we'll go back. And we'll move it into the plate. We just ran out of time, and <laughs> you know, it's just trying to set the range up and that distance. You know, it's just it's tough. You know, and look, and you would be one of the first people, I'm sure, to say that yes, uh, it requires incredible rifle and bullet and cartridge and scope and all the rest of it, but it also requires somebody operating that thing who seriously knows what he's doing. Yes, sir, and that was no doubt. That's when Charlie and I first met, and he said he wanted to shoot three miles, and I asked him if he'd done it, and he hadn't. I said, well, here's a card. I'd gladly help you. If you can't find what you need, just, you know, and we just kept talking, and it's just, it, it's been a great partnership. Char- talking about yeah. Charlie Melton from uh, Charlie Mike Precision. Yes, he's, he's the one that did the shot, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So how much better? Uh, well, let me back up. I have a, a thought, and I'm pretty sure this is true, but you've been at this almost four decades now anyway. Um, are our run-of-the-mill factory rifles and cartridges better now because of the bench rest shooting and the hand loading and all of that? I believe so. I, I really do. I mean, I was just talking to a friend of mine. He's buying a $300 gun. They can shoot sub-half minute of angle with factory <laughs> ammo. I mean, that, that was unheard <laughs> of just 10 years ago. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a, it's incredible. And then the, the barrel makers, uh, everybody, it's just gotten so much better. And the, the optics, that Charlie Tarrack unit, made it this we, – we could do it without it, but the versatility of this rifle now, is a, it's amazing. We can have 100 yards zero, and we go to 5,000 yards in the same mm-hmm. day without doing anything except putting that mirror unit on. It's astounding what's, what we have available right now. So where do you go from here? I mean, we, obviously we've got this 5,000-yard shot. Where are they going with this thing? Well, well, we'll take it further. We'll do it by the rules. You know, we'll do the three-shot and eight hours between. We didn't, we didn't know there's rules. We just uh-huh. were doing something we wanted to do. So mm-hmm. we'll go do that, and then we're going to push it. We're going to push it as far as we can. I'm already redesigning a bullet. I, I, well, we're going to go try 6,000. I mean, the bullet's doing so well. Holy We're just going to try it, and hopefully this next spring. Just keep oh, going. Yeah. I know one of the things people are asking is, how do you handle the wind? How do you even know what the wind's doing at, at the distance? Well, and it's like my first 1,000-yard bench rest match. I got there, and I asked the guys, what are those flags doing down there on the ground? You know, and <laughs> I said, it's your wind flags. And I said, sir, you know, I'm new to this, but my boat's going to be 60 feet in the air. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. And we were 1,500 feet in the air. So we were down in a valley. Uh-huh. We had perfect conditions. It was about quarter value wind, only four miles an hour, overcast, no sun, no mirage. It is absolutely letter perfect. And our windage, we weren't, well, I said we kept it inside 40 inches at 3,000 yards. That's just unbelievable. Yes, That's amazing stuff. Well, Brad, yeah. I am I am impressed. Uh, now, the the name of your outfit is Performance Guns. People cannot find you on the internet, uh, but if they, you know what, if they need to find you, they just need to be 
part of the club of that kind of long-range shooting because those folks know who you are and know how to get a hold of you. Do, do you even want to give out the information on how people get a hold of you? Sure, sure. They, they okay. can. Um, I, an email address is the best way. And okay. It's just perfguns at gmail.com, P-E-R-F as in Frank, guns at gmail.com. That's okay, for performance way. guns. Perfguns at Correct. gmail.com. That's easy. Yes, sir. Brad Stair, S-T-A-I-R. Brad, thank you so much. It is phenomenal what you're doing. I want to get you on again when we can have a little bit more time to talk about guns and ammo and the history of bench rest shooting and all the other fun stuff we'd like to chat about. Yes, sir. That would be okay. great. Sounds good. Thanks so much, sir. I appreciate it. Yeah, that is an amazing accomplishment, an amazing rifle. Uh, good Lord, that's really something. Uh, would you like to try that? 866-TALK-GUN. Looking for your range reports. I'm Tom Gresham. This is Gun Talk. Double Tap Ammunition and Colt Ammunition, manufactured by Double Tap. Using top-of-the-line components, made in the USA, and hand-inspected. Choose from 481 loads in 82 calibers. Defense, hunting, competition. Double Tap. Responsible owners control access to their firearms, even when they may need them in a hurry. Liberty Safe, the nation's leader in gun safes, offers six models of handgun vaults. Strong, simple to use, Open with a key or fingerprint. Put your handgun in the compact vault, lock it away until you need it. Then it's in your hand almost instantly. Pick the Liberty Safe handgun vault that's right for you. LibertySafeHD.com. The pistol that redefined pocket carry just got even better. The Ruger LCP2 has improved sights, an easy-to-rack slide, a larger textured grip surface for a secure grip and recoil reduction, and a short, crisp, single-action trigger pull for real-world accuracy. It's so small and light that there's no reason to ever leave home without your LCP2. A serious pistol in a pint-sized package. Learn more about the LCP2 at Ruger.com. Perhaps more than any other landscape, Wetlands embody the life-giving abundance that nature has to offer. And perhaps more than any other organization, Ducks Unlimited is working to ensure that our continent's wetlands not only survive, but thrive for generations well beyond this one. The time is now to band together. The time is now to rescue our wetlands. Used guns can be a great value, but you have to know who you're buying from. What if you could buy quality used guns with a lifetime warranty from the Internet's largest online reseller? That's what you get at Dewey'sGuns.com. They stand behind every firearm purchase for life. If you have a problem, they'll either fix or replace your gun. Pistols, rifles, shotguns, and more. Check out their inventory today at Dewey'sGuns.com. Crimson Trace announces LaserGuard Pro, designed for today's most popular concealed carry firearms. Combining a red or green laser sight with 150 lumen light and featuring instinctive activation, LaserGuard Pro takes personal defense to the next level. Available now for the Smith & Wesson Shield. Visit CrimsonTrace.com to find a dealer near you and to learn more about why Crimson Trace is making laser sights standard equipment. Colt National Match Ammunition, manufactured by Double Tap, is specially developed for performance and accuracy. Real match ammo, designed with competition power factors in mind. Colt National Match Ammunition by Double Tap Ammo, available in stores now. All right, back with you. This is interesting. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's go to line one. Micah is with us uh, overnight Detroit. Hey, Mike, I just got a, uh, an email from you with a picture. That is some buck, my friend. Uh, actually, I'm not sure if that's my picture or not. Uh, I don't okay. remember sending one, but this nope. is a story of my, uh, I took my wife uh, hunting for the first time. Uh, last year, she decided to spend time with me. She needed to do some of my hobbies and uh we got her doing a three gun match this summer and then i got her a uh, hunter safety course done we got her a rifle a six five creedmoor savage 11 lady hunter 
Ooh. and uh, put in some tags. And last week, she got her uh, her first antelope. Really? So, now, how did she? I mean, how did you transit? And she had never hunted before. She hadn't shot a gun until about three or four years ago. She would never hunted. She just decided That's she was going to do it. Okay. So, and then next week we're going out elk hunting. So it'll be. Uh, it's. A, I just encourage other women to, if they want to spend time with their husbands, it's a. It's a good thing to get into. Something you can do together. And, so. It's interesting, the, the couple I just spent the last couple of weeks with, uh, they hunt together. What's interesting, though, is that she doesn't hunt. She doesn't want to shoot things, but she likes going on the hunt, and she likes the physical activity. She'll pack in. She camps. She spots. She does all the rest of it. She doesn't want to shoot anything, which is okay. No, you know, no, no big deal there. Um, I'm just curious how your wife, how did she come to that? Did you encourage her? Did she do that on her own to make this transition? Um, she did it on her own pretty much. I mean, uh, she was tired of me gone, being gone for a week, going elk hunting every year, <laughs> and just decided she's going to go. So okay. We got her set up, and then just to get her out there and get a little taste for it and see if she was up for it, it put in for a couple other tags for her, and right. we ended up getting a Wyoming doe tag, and she did it on her own, too. I was trying to go through a fence, and I was putting the fence back together, you know, when you take the wire off the top and everything. Right, right. And uh, I said, here, go look over that hill over there. Just, You know, she'd been stalking some. We'd been stalking some before, and they, we just couldn't get close within 400, 500 yards. Right. And she went over this hill, and I saw her get down on her army crawl, and she took the shot, and I wasn't even there. <laughs> <laughs> so where are you going to go elk hunting? Uh, well, I'm from Colorado. I'm actually a pilot on an overnight here in Detroit. So um, we're going to go up in northern Colorado where we go okay. every year. And, okay. So she's got a cow tag. i got a bull tag. So That's excellent. Well, you guys, I, I wish you lots of luck with it, and congratulations. Uh, you guys are going to have uh, probably have a, a lifetime of spending time together. That is pretty great. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right. Thanks so much. Appreciate that call. Let's go line three. Tom's with us out of Bakersfield, California. Hey, Tom, what's on your mind? Yes, sir. I wanted to talk to you about the 17 rim fire. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've been having difficulties uh, getting the the Mach 2. Mm -hmm. And I built two custom 1022s, put a lot of money into them, and I'd like to find something to send down range with it. but. Been difficult for me it's, to find. It's hard to find the ammo. Yeah, they're talking about the 17 Mach II. Um, it really didn't catch on. You can still f- you can find it, but you you know um, you, you got to look for it. I mean, you know the drill. There there are some cartridges that just take off, and some that just lay there and don't go anywhere. And for whatever reason, the 17 Mach II did not catch on. Uh, have you been able to find any ammo for it at all? Well, I keep a thousand rounds in reserve, but I right. mean, once that's gone, I mean, I have to re recon- rebarrel or re chamber and line the barrels. And you know, I would be tempted uh, if it were me. I would be uh, if I really love those rifles and wanted to keep them. I would be trying to find ten thousand rounds somewhere and, and find some way. To, <laughs> you know, just just a thought. I just. Uh, I, I, that's what I would be trying to do. But short of that, I'd shoot them up and then maybe sell the rifle or, as you say, rebarrel. It's another way to go. But I'm afraid that the 17 Mach 2 is going to end up being a, an orphan of sorts. You know, it, they may not stop making ammo, but if you just can't find it, it's almost like having an orphan. It's like having a 6.5 Bremington Magnum. Uh, fun cartridge, but you can't get any ammo for it. I wish you luck with it. Uh, man, that's... That's a tough one. All right, so uh, 866-TALK-GUN will get you in here. I went on a deer hunt this week, not last week, got a buck, but I went on a deer hunt and discovered that it wasn't actually a deer I was hunting for. I have some details about that when I get back, and I expect it'll probably ring true with some of you as well.
had a good time. I've been uh, two and a half weeks up here in Idaho, uh, visiting with some friends, doing some hunting, spending a little time in the backcountry, doing a little flying back there. We've been hit with some fog in the mornings. It's been a little tough to get out and about, but uh, it clears usually by noon. Went into the backcountry, went into the Frank Church River of No Return Wilderness area, hunting mule deer. And I got one, not a big one. Got a nice, uh, you might call it winter meat, meat buck, uh, three by three. It was delicious. Oh, some of the best venison we have had ever, frankly. But what was interesting is we're back there, we're camping in a wilderness area. And I, as you might imagine, I've been hunting deer for a long time, more than 50 years now. I've gotten a lot of deer. And I was uh, walking one morning by myself long stream, actually the middle fork of the salmon, and it occurred to me that I had gone on a deer hunt only to discover that I was hunting something else. I think, and they talk about the progression of being a hunter, and you first you want to take something, then you want to take a lot of something, then you want to take a big thing, then you want to take other people out and such, and I think I've hit that point where I want to spend time with my friends but what I was hunting was not necessarily a deer. I, I go deer hunting to go find the other things. Listening to the stream, to the river, saw some petroglyphs. And there are drawings there. One is <laughs> a guy with a bow. And they've got elk and ram. And you realize I'm not the first hunter here. And I have a connection with those people hundreds or maybe even thousands of years ago. Got a connection with the people I'm with. I have a connection with my father, who's no longer here, who took me on my first deer hunt, with my son, who I took on his first deer hunt. There's a lot going on there, and it is one of those things, I think many would agree, that it's difficult to explain to people. Why do you go deer hunting? Why do you hunt? Well, for a number of different reasons. But it was fulfilling in a way that just getting the buck was not. And that was good. I mean, hey, look, uh, made a, a nice shot, and I always like to take pride in making a good shot. Lasered uh, 255 yards. I had a nice bench rest rock, <laughs> almost, and slipped over, leaned against that. He was back in the uh, shadows. I think he thought he was invisible way back there. Uh, using uh, Nasa rifle, Nasa ballistic tip ammo, broke both shoulders, and he just rolled down the hill, which is good, coming closer to us, so we didn't have to go quite as far up to get him. And as I say, just delicious. And camping, we had uh, onions and tenderloin, a back strap. It was pretty terrific. The memories, and I think at a certain point, what we're really doing, I just submit this for your consideration. I think what we're really doing is we're out there building memories. Isn't that what we're doing when we do all of this anyway? We're, we're doing this thing that we can come back and have these memories. And I take a lot of pictures, took some video. We'll put together a little video on it. But it didn't turn out to be the hunt I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going on a deer hunt. It turned out to be much more, much better, richer, more dense, if you will. It was a special time, and I'm going to do it again and again. I'm going to come back. I'm going to do it as much as I can. But I just uh, want to throw that out that sometimes when you're trying to explain it to people, maybe they'll, they'll get it, maybe they won't. But yes, we go hunting for deer or duck or elk. But I think the reality is we're hunting for something else. And hunting for the animal is the path that we use to get to that other thing. It may take you dozens of years to figure it out, but that's okay. You'll get there. 